Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I wanted to show you a simple example of a sampling distribution looking at the mean, the probability of five occurring, uh, the variance, the median, the range, and the standard deviation. Um, and then we can see why some of these are as, uh, unbiased and why some of these are biased. So a local school had three winners of this school safety poster contest. The ages of the winners are 5, 7, and 11, and that gives us a population of 5, 7, and 11. Using those three ages as our population, we can create a sampling distribution table that includes all those things that I just mentioned. Um, and so we are choosing two numbers, or n is 2, from our population with replacement. So it could be, here's the different samples that I could get. I could pick 5 and replace it and then pick 5 again. So one of my samples could be 5-5. Five, five. I could choose 5 and then replace it and then choose 7. That makes my second possible. 5 and then 11 and so forth until I get all 9 of my possible populate my sample. And that's the distribution table that I'm making for these. So the first thing I did was compute the mean for this particular sample. And so the average or mean for 5 and 5 is 5, for 5 and 7 is 6, 5 and 11 is 8, and so forth. So the average for all the samples that I took, those nine samples, two, N of 2, the averages of that was 7.67. And if I found the mean of the population, which is 5, 7, 11, I would also find that to be 7.67. So what if I wanted to know what proportion of fives I would get in a population? Well, when there's three values, you can see that my proportion of fives is one-third, right? So 0.33 for the population. But when I look at my samples here, I had a five and a five, so I had 100% or one. All of those were fives. In five and seven, half of those were fives. Five and 11, half of those were fives. Seven and five, half of those were Fives. But then 7 and 7, there was no 5. 7 and 11, no 5s. 11 and 5, half of them were 5s, and so forth. And if I take the average of all my proportions that I had in my sample, then I find that I have 0.33 for the average of these, and that exactly matches the population value of 0.33 that you would expect, that you would get 1 5 out of 3 chances when you reach into the entire population. The standard deviation, I used a calculator to get those. Remember, you can find the, I mean, this is variance, excuse me. The standard deviation squared gives us the variance. And there's a reason I drew a dark line here. So the standard deviation, I rounded and then I squared it. And so I might have had some rounding issues that caused my average standard deviation to be 6.22 and the actual standard deviation of my population to be 6.2. But what I hope you can see is that these are very close. And so these three values are what we call unbiased estimators because they reflect or they target the actual population values from our samples have the averages that reflect the actual values from our population. Have I said that enough? trying to say it clearly. And then the median, if I look at the median or the middle value of my samples here, I get these particular values and that averages um, to 7.67 which does not really match the population one. The range, the range of our actual population is from 5 to 11 so the range is 6. But when I look at the uh, range here, my average comes out to 2.67, not a good estimate. And then here, my standard deviations average is 1.88, and that's not a good uh, reflection of what I actually have here. So sometimes standard deviation can be used, but for our purposes, we're going to say it's, it's a biased estimator, not a good one. You can see from this distribution table that that's true. The other thing I wanted to show you about the distribution is sometimes you might talk about the probability. And the probability... Um, that something will happen, let me get that out of there so I can scroll down a little, um, the probability, so I just took my sample that I had up there and I took the mean and then I said okay one time I got five and five, one time I got five and seven, but if I was talking about the probability of um, this mean coming up and I could really regroup those because my mean was five here and that was the only time it was 5. So truly one-ninth of the time I get a mean of 5. 
But if I look at the second one, 5 and 7, I get a mean of 6. And that happened, this particular sample, 5, 7, happened once, but 7, 5 gives me the same mean. So 5 and 7 and 7, 5 give me the same mean, and so that mean of 6 comes up 2 out of 9 times. The same thing happens with 5 and 11 and 11 and 5. So even though those look separate, they end up with the same mean. So we would say 2 ninths of the time, we get a mean of 8. 7, 7 was a unique case, so that's 1 out of 9. But 7, 11, 11, and 7 would happen 2 ninths of the time. And 11, 11 happens uniquely, so that's 1 ninth of the time. So one of the things you'll have to do in your homework is they talk about the probability of this happening. You need to group the probabilities together that would be the same. All right, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.